Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Alta Labs S8 PoE. This is the first switch out by Alta Labs, and they are going to be coming out with the 24 port and a 48 port switch. I want to thank Alta Labs for sending me the switch to do a review on. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. I do have a Discord server and affiliate links in the description below. The S8 PoE has four PoE Plus ports and four non PoE ports and they all do one gigabit per second. On the top of the switch, they do have an Alta Lab logo that we could change the color of. It's fully featured with RGB. They do have about six different colors that you could scroll through and you could pick what you want. Not a massive feature that people ask for, but it is nice to do a color that you'd like. Now right here, this is their 24 port and their 48 port switch, which I don't have yet, but I will be getting shortly. And we will take a look at those once I get it. If we scroll down on the switch page, we could see the differences between the eight port, the 16 and the 24. So for the S8 PoE, which we're taking a look at today, it has eight ports and then it has four that are PoE and no SFP ports. And the PoE budget is 60 watts. Now to me, it would be nice if companies would start coming out with switches with full PoE across all the ports. I would be willing to pay a bit more money. As we can see here that there's only four PoE on the S8 PoE. On the 16, there's only eight. And then the 24, there's only 16. I do realize it's to keep the budget down. Now, if we look at the switch port LEDs, if it's using PoE, it's gonna be orange. If the network is 10 by 100, it's gonna be orange. And if it's running at a gigabit, it's gonna be blue. In the box, it does come with this mounting bracket that has the Alta Labs logo on it, which you could put on your wall if you'd like. I'm just gonna be having it on my desk. So now let's get into the user interface. And this is the Alta Labs Cloud Dashboard. You may have seen it before in my AP video. Currently, Alta Labs doesn't have any local controller, so that may drive your purchasing decisions with Alta Labs. They do say that they are coming out with the local controller, but I really don't know when. To get the switch into your controller, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is plug it into an internet connection, and then it will show up on your dashboard, and then bring it into whatever site you want that switch into. Now, if we take a look under the name, it shows switch, and we could change this to whatever we want. It does show our IP address, and then we have our load. If we hover over this little CPU, it's going to show us the system load, the memory used, and the uptime. We could see the devices that are attached to it. We could see the MAC address, and then we could see version. And it does look like there might be an upgrade on this switch. If we hover over it, it says 1.2 E-Dirty, so let's click on it. Now it's saying, when do you want to update the switch? You could do it right now, or you could do it tonight. Let's try it right now. And unfortunately, I am having a timeout issue with it. We'll try it once more and go right now and see if it actually pushes through. If it doesn't, we'll just carry on. So you can see that there's this little circle and it looks like it is updating the switch. So that's great. Even though it looked like the switch was updating its firmware, it didn't. We could still see that it's at 1.2 E dash dirty so that's something they'll have to look into maybe it's just a bug beside the versioning we have these colors which there's no colors currently assigned i think with the colors if we have two switches and we put them in the same color it's going to just bring the vlans across that and we'll test it when i do get a second switch and then we have our status and this will just show us the traffic the time and the system load and we could also delete the switch from the controller now you may be wondering where does the devices get their ips from so right now the devices are getting 192 16810.x and that will be from whatever firewall you're using. Alta Labs currently doesn't have a router or a firewall, so you'll have to use something else like PFSense or I'm using my UDMSE. So looking over at my UDMSE, we could see all these other networks that I've created. Currently the native VLAN within Alta Labs is the 192.168.10.x network. We're going to end up putting VLAN 30 and we'll put in VLAN 4 into it. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. Now let's take a look at the switch settings. So to get to it, we just need to click on our switch and the settings will pop up on the right hand page. So we can see our ports and on port one, we have an Alta Labs access point on port two. I think that's the grand stream phone. And then on port eight, that is the uplink, which is going to another ubiquity switch. That's why we could see so many MAC addresses attached to it. So port eight is acting as our trunk port. Now hovering over the legend, it tells us a couple of things. If you're a triangle, it's going to be our uplink. If we have a U on it, that means this is an untag port. If it's a T, that's our tag port. We have POE if you see the little power button. And then if it's red, like a stop sign, that's blocked. We also have LACP, which we will test out when I get a second Alta Lab switch. Below we have VLANs and then we have our temperature. So the temperature currently is 102.9 Fahrenheit. 
and then we could click on settings. Under the settings, we could specify what we want to do with this network. Do we want it to grab an IP from DHCP or do we want to set it static? Then we could tell the switch which management VLAN to take and then we have fallback upon failure. Let's take a look at what that means. So if enabled, this device will fall back to VLAN 1 plus DHCP if the configured connection fails. This can help prevent an unnecessary or unwanted on-site factory reset. As you saw previously in the video, this is where we would change the LED color of the Alta Labs logo on the switch. And these are all the different colors that we could choose. We could also connect it to a radius server if that's what we're using. Now let's get some VLANs added into this switch. So how we do that, we click on the switch and then we go over to VLANs. If we look at the drop-down menu, there's only VLAN number one. So we need to click on the plus icon and then put in our VLAN ID. For this, it will be 30 and that's for my camera network. Once we have that put in, we're going to press add. Now we're going to add a second VLAN by clicking plus, adding the VLAN ID, which will be four, and then the note will be for VoIP, and then we'll press add. Now going back to the VLAN dropdown menu, you can see that we have VLAN 4, we have VLAN 30, and we have VLAN 1, which is our native VLAN. Now by default, every single VLAN is allowed down the network switch port. So if we click on port 3, we can see that the native VLAN is default, and then the allowed VLANs is all. Let's click on this drop down menu. From here, if we didn't want all, we could either select none or we could click on the VLANs that we would want. We could deselect native VLAN one or VoIP or our cameras. Now, when we're doing our access points or another switch uplink, you're gonna want to have those allowed VLANs tagged within that. Now for port three, I'm gonna make it an access port. I'll click on the port and then under the allowed VLANs, I'm gonna deselect all, so select none. And then under the native VLAN, I'm gonna put it in VLAN 30. Once that's done, I'll press save, and then I'm gonna plug my computer into it. My computer should get an IP address from my camera range. We can now see that my computer is plugged into port three. Let's bring up a command prompt. If we type in IP config, and then we scroll up to our ethernet adapter, you could see that I'm getting 192.168.30.195 which is my camera network. Now, a couple other settings on the port, we can name the port and then we have our mode. So right now we're just in standard, but we could have it on 802.1x. We could disable it, we could do port mirroring and we could combine for LACP. We could put it in the color group, which we'll explore more when I have another switch. We have the native VLAN, allowed VLAN. We have our power PoE, so we could turn it on or off. We have the speed, so you could see that we could set it to auto, one gigabit, 100 megabit per second full duplex, 10 full duplex, and 10 half duplex. We'd also do isolation, and then we could do download and upload limiting. So let's do that right now. Currently it's on default, so we could get our full bandwidth. But if we click on the download limit, I'm gonna set it to 10 down. And then on our upload, I'm gonna set it to two. We also have LLDP med, we have voice VLAN, loop detection, storm control, and allowed MAC addresses. Let's press save on that and then do a speed test. Now I'm gonna run a speed test and we should get fairly close to 10 down and two up. And you can see that we are getting 9.4 down and we're getting 1.88 up. So that is pretty close and it's very easy to do. Now, one thing that we can't do is select multiple ports to edit them if we want them all to be the same. For devices that are getting PoE, we could hover over the port and then we could do a power cycle on that device. So let's try it out. You can see that the port went offline and it will come back up online. Now that's gonna be it for this video on the Alta Labs S8-POE. And what do I think of the switch? Well, I mean, it's a decent switch. Are they doing anything new? Not really, I mean, it has four PoE ports and then four non-PoE ports. It's pretty lightweight and it would make for a great desk switch. One big complaint that a lot of people are having is that they don't have a local controller right now. And hopefully they do bring that in the future because that will drive a lot of people to not buying it as they don't want their devices in the cloud. If Alta Labs ever sold or they went under, then the devices would become useless. Another thing, the mobile app is pretty flaky. I tried to get the switch into the controller by that and it just wouldn't work. So it does need a bit of time to bake in. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.